evening. Good evening. Thank y'all for coming out. Coming out. Thank you all. This is um Comedy Wham. And I am Tremaine Bradley. Yes, I am not Colton. Um, but I'm just as white. No, I'm kidding. I'm not Colton, though. Um, I'm gonna be his um, I'm gonna be his stand-in for tonight. Uh, I want to apologize in advance. I just left the ER, so you all are doing perfectly fine. Um, social distancing from me because I am sick as shit. Uh <clears throat> But just a little bit about Comedy Wham. It's going to be your place uh, for all features of Austin comedy. And see, now they've moved over to doing a lot of things um, online, too. So we're doing live shows. We normally do podcasts, you know, album reviews and stuff of that sort. But we're doing live shows right here on Twitch, Tuesdays and Fridays. And our purpose is we're looking to help out comics because we don't have a stage, but we still want to talk shit. And y'all still want to listen to stuff for like nothing. <laughs> so that's what we're here to give for you all because we need it. None of us is getting paid for this. We all could be watching the same grandma's Netflix, but we are here tonight. <laughs> we're going to have a great time. All right. And just so you all know, if they're going to be a few like at the bottom. You're going to see names and people's um, um, Venmos. Don't treat it like church and just like tap the basket and keep it moving. No, put something in there. Put something in there that that folds. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you, we're not touching money right now, but you know what I mean. Something that folds, nothing that that jingles. We do, we want change in other ways, not not for the, for what we're doing on stage. All right, and this is our stage, even though I'm sitting down. We're technically on stage. Um, the all, like every single comic, their information is going to be at the bottom of the screen. Um, and you know their PayPal. So please give gener generously uh, to the comics. And if you're watching on the replay. You can still donate. So the names you see at the bottom don't expire because you don't see live at top. So don't do that. All right. Again, do not treat this like church. Mm -hmm. We're looking at you. Okay. <laughs> Pretend that somebody's looking at you. Turn to your right and say, neighbor, neighbor, don't be cheap. And I, I, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna act like y'all said it because in my mind, everybody has been cheering since I've, since I started this. You all have been like flipping over tables. I'm reading things in subtitles. It's like ha ha ha, that boy funny. It's the best thing I've ever seen. Um, oh, as I said before, I'm tired. Uh, got a little bit of PD light right here. I dropped some lean in there for all my Houston people. Um, trying to make sure I keep, <laughs> keep my electrolytes yeah. up. Um, I'm gonna do something extremely quick and then get into the comic. Uh, this is the thing since I got sick going to the protest, I started thinking, like, you know, just I do a lot of dumb songs, and on my Facebook, I was going back and forth about an idea of maybe they're gonna make a Black Lives Matter protest movie starring Hillary Swank. It's definitely gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I got into this conversation just being funny, but a hundred comments later, people were actually giving me great ideas. <laughs> and the funny thing is, if you follow me, you can go read it. It's I, I swear before before everything, it is some of the funniest shit you will ever read. And it's not mine. These are just people throwing random ideas, and it's the most outlandish. Like somebody said they're gonna have Meryl Streep playing the ghost. Never mind, I'm not gonna say that one, but but look. <laughs> The funniest <laughs> thing I have ever read. And someone was like, wait, they should have um, they should have Miley Cyrus playing uh, protests in the USA. <laughs> <laughs> and the comic in me was like, you know what? It's the quarantine. It, yeah, it was the quarantine before, but every month later we take out a, a letter. So it's officially <laughs> quarantine. Okay, <laughs> it's a protein with a Q O. Okay, so like when I say quo, you say T. Yeah, it's so so it's protein. Okay, team. <laughs> and for the protein, I wrote protests in the USA, and I'm gonna beatbox because I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I got out the car with my mask and gloves, water bottles is ready to go. <laughs> People got their signs. <laughs> keep going, keep going. 
<laughs> look, I just got out the hospital. I look, yeah, I've I haven't been out the hospital a whole twenty four hours, and I wrote this damn song for y'all. So y'all, y'all gonna have to bear with me because this shit is, this is so stupid. <laughs> I got out the car with my mask and glove, water bottles is ready to go. People got their signs and their fists is up. Other folks is watching the show. Hey, I'm watching through the crowd and feeling like my first time. Look to the right and I saw a black live sign. It's all so crazy. Police just seem so angry. <laughs> Stomach bubbling. I feel I got a boo boo. Let out a fart and I think she smelled it too. <laughs> And a car pulled up with the radio and the Kendrick song was on. Hi. And the Kendrick, and the Kendrick song Kendrick was, on. was on. And the Kendrick song was on. <laughs> so I put my fist up. We marching downtown and my bubble yeah. guts, they are gone. Woo! <laughs> 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 Taking a knee like, yeah. Woo! Watching the gas like, yeah. I yeah. got my hands up. Please don't shoot. But Karen said it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, protest in the USA. Yeah, yeah. protest in the USA. I ain't got hey. no um. <laughs> and before we get into this, I'm gonna go ahead and put up this disclaimer. So anything crazy I may or may not say today doesn't represent me. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so again. I want you all to have a great goddamn time. Y'all could have been watching Grandma's Netflix, but you're here with Comedy Wham. So we have a bunch of funny comics. This first comic coming up is coming all the way from the goddamn Great Britain. But he is here to make y'all laugh in your home. Y'all going to love him. I love him. It's my man, Ryan Moe, the best and only British comic on this goddamn show. Let's go. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, it feels like the end is in sight a little bit with the coronavirus. Our, um, our Prime Minister last week said that um, uh, we've reached the summit, but we're coming down the mountain and this is the most dangerous. No it isn't. Why is that the most dangerous? I'm pretty sure lions and tigers couldn't give a shit which way you're going. <laughs> like another lion jump out and start growling. Oh, I'm gonna eat you! Uh, no, you can't because I'm I'm going up the mountain. Oh, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll let the buffalo know. Elephants are not sauntering up a mountain and stampeding down, are they? Unless you're doing roly polies, I'd argue it's just as dangerous walking up a mountain. Um, so a lot of comedians, they make their material all link, so it all goes smoothly. I don't have that luxury, so I'm just going to say the word <laughs> link. <laughs> so, uh, I'm one of the only comedians on the circuit that is openly colourblind. Um, <laughs> our disabled parking card in the UK is known as a blue badge. And there was a petition last year to get colorblind classed as a disability. Uh, it didn't get passed. Uh, supermarkets were never going to have a parking bay with a rainbow and a guy underneath just going. <laughs> <laughs> never know what color it was anyway. They could make it polka dot and just have to believe it was blue. I don't, I don't know if you know, the most common type of colorblind is that red and green look the same. Um, it's not a disability, but they shouldn't let us fucking drive with <laughs> <laughs> people's lives. I, um, I couldn't learn the traffic light system the normal way. I had to learn it as top, middle and bottom. Yeah. And I get quite bad road rage too, especially stuck at traffic lights. I remember leaning out the window, getting angry, shouting, come on, mate, it's been on bottom for ages. <laughs> 
<laughs> my, uh, my biggest challenge <laughs> at the moment are these green light honkers. I, I don't know if you know these people. <laughs> you beat the traffic lights and it's gone green. And because it's taken you a millisecond to realise, you've got <laughs> people behind you honking their horn. And it's generally some tradesmen who are famously never on time for anything. <laughs> Recently, this guy in this van thing behind me was getting so angry. He was proper losing his shit. He was getting so angry, like a life depended on him. Looking back, I probably should let the ambulance through. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Link. Uh, <laughs> that loser that you'll see at the clearance areas in supermarkets. Um, I don't care what I'm buying. All I care about is how reduced is this? <laughs> Dinner times in my house is so varied. One night it's a damaged tin of spaghetti hoops. The next, a gluten-free lasagna with cocoa pops. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see charity collectors on the high street saying how they can feed, uh, feed families for $3 a day. I can feed my entire family for $3 a day. What sort of luxuries are they eating? I bet they're paying full price for their rice. <laughs> so, good woman to, to turn this round, isn't it? Um, so, uh, Link. <laughs> I got a dog um, at the end of last year. And, uh, and we're forced to have these boring dog conversations with other dog owners. <laughs> but still, uh, with social distancing, they're still wanting to have them, but mm -hmm. two metres away. So we're pretty much in a park, shouting at each other. Oh, uh, your dog's playful. Oh, what breed is yours? Oh, your dog's attacking my son. You know, like boring <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Recently, I walked past a, a muzzled dog. It was barking ferociously, and the owner was really struggling to handle it. But he said to me, um, oh, he's friendly. He just wants to play. I couldn't <laughs> disagree anymore. The only game he wants to play is soccer with my head. Oh, <laughs> um, so it's my, it my birthday a couple of weeks ago. And I feel... Um, <laughs> thank you for round of applause. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel uh, grumpier and I feel a lot frailer. I've been needing to see a chiropractor. You know these people? Uh, you, you go there with your aches and pains, and the answer is always for them to start ramming their elbow into your back. <laughs> they start hurting the bit that hurts. You'd never go to your doctor with a sore throat and say, would you mind putting me in a quick chokehold? <laughs> you can go there with a headache and you'll probably just punch you in the face. And it costs an absolute fortune as well. You spend all this money, and at the end, you just get beaten up. Where I come from, that's just a normal Saturday night out. <laughs> <laughs> but you do get what you pay for, though. Uh, I went to the cheapest one I could find, and he did give me a medical diagnosis. He said, the reason why my back is so bad uh, is because of my slouch and the size of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, my silhouette looks like a toffee apple. <laughs> Uh, the, the average head uh, in the UK weighs 4.5 kilograms. Mine it weighs eight. <laughs> I think that's why previous girlfriends <laughs> haven't wanted to have children with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to leave you on that, ladies and gentlemen. You've, uh, you've got a great evening ahead of you. I uh, hope you have a good time and I'll see you again soon. Good night. <laughs> Ryan, I love Ryan because um, in America, uh, I suck at math. So Ryan's going to be the one who's buying all of our drugs. Thank you, Ryan, for, <laughs> for that great, great math problem. I don't even know the joke, but I laughed at the end because it was like, okay, I think that added up because I heard people laughing. So the next comic <laughs> coming up, 
Um, you've seen him on Last Comic Standing, BuzzFeed. He just released a TED Talk, which is awesome. I'm going to need you all to start making some noise for Eric Escobar. Woo! I'm so happy to be here. Everyone, make some noise. We're all excited. We're going to have a good time. Um, I want to know where everyone's coming from. So if you're watching on Twitch, put it down there. If you're in the Zoom chat, you can even shout it out. Where's everyone coming from? Where, where we got? Long Austin. Beach. Austin. We got Long Beach in the house. Austin. We got Austin. What's Austin. up? What's up? I'm in. New Orleans. Where? Portland? New Austin. Orleans. New Orleans, very similar to Portland. New Orleans and Portland. No, they're not. They're actually very different cities. Not at all alike. I, <laughs> yeah. I live in LA. It's been scary, guys. Um, it's been getting dangerous. Like, uh, someone got shot outside my apartment last night. And I was freaking out. I was freaking out. Because it was the first time I've ever used a gun. All right? It was very scary. Very, very horrible. Didn't like it. I, uh, <laughs> I actually, uh, I went hunting one time as a kid. It traumatized me. Because I went hunting for rabbits. I tried to shoot this rabbit, accidentally hit the magician. Okay. And that was the third worst birthday party I think I've ever been to. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. I, uh, <laughs> I'm quarantining with my girlfriend. Who else hates their partner right now? I hate her so much. Oh my Lord. So much. We started, uh, we're trying to spice things up. So we started doing role playing. I don't know if you know what role playing is, but it's one of those things where uh, you get in bed with your partner and you uh, play with each other's roles. All right. Been gaining a lot of weight during lockdown. It's great. I'm her little Pillsbury dough baby. You know what I'm talking about? Sexy boy, sexy boy, <laughs> sexy man. I'm a sexy man. What am I talking about? No. I, uh, I wanted something nice for her. So I bought her some lingerie the other day and she was like, Eric, why would you still shop at Goodwill? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I got a second hand, am I right? Ew, gross, gross, gross. That's just not bad. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Um, since I've been with her, we've been ordering a ton of delivery and takeout. It's wild. I have this drawer full of like plastic forks and knives now. Like some cut really well. Others, you can barely finish the circumcision. All right. It really is <laughs> very difficult. Very, very difficult. <laughs> I don't typically live with my girl. I, uh, I live with some horrible roommates right now. Make some noise. If you've ever had a horrible roommate, who's got a horrible roommate here? Couple people. Heard? Awesome. Um, if you were quiet right now, <laughs> you were the horrible roommate, all right? So <laughs> clean <to> your dishes. <laughs> I currently have the worst roommates ever. My usual roommates are the worst. They're loud. They're messy. They're my parents. Really difficult. Very, very hard. <laughs> and what's weird is they're so conservative, and I'm definitely on the other side of the spectrum. Like, the other day, my mom asked me if I was pro-gay people. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she was like, Eric, are you pro gay people? I'm like, mom, <laughs> I'm not even amateur gay people. All right. How do I join the league? Is there an audition? I would love to audition. I'll do fantasy gay. It'll be great. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> My dad's even worse, man. My dad does some messed up stuff. One time he called someone, uh, what did he call? He calls him an oriental. And I'm like, dad, you don't say that anymore. Say like Asian. Uh, one time he called someone heavy set. I'm like, dad, don't say heavy set. Say plus size or fat. You know what I mean? I'd rather be fat been heavy set but the worst <laughs> thing ever the thing that really like made me just so upset is um i overheard him call someone recently a pussy and i'm like dad that is messed up it is 2020 we do not call people pussy anymore we call them millennials which is oh, a hard joke to do as a 30 year old <laughs> very difficult aren't we a horrible generation we're so awkward we're so weird when's the last time you had a conversation with like a 24 year old it's like you're talking to 20 <laughs> four-year-olds all right like they can't listen they can't read everyone still lives yeah. at home but i figured it out i figured it out the reason why millennials are so weird is because we were the first generation to have smartphones i like iphones the internet and i think it made us all addicted to it so now we can't do anything without technology like um i was taking a poop the other day realized i didn't have my phone with me <laughs> and i started crying Okay, I started crying. Wow. Out, 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 I finished my business and then I got out of the pool. And that was the third worst birthday party oh. I think I have ever been to. Pretty bad, pretty horrible. 
<laughs> oh man um you guys may have seen me on some things like your wonderful host said you may have seen me on last comic standing or comedy central or craigslist really a good <laughs> list of credits really fun <laughs> it's weird when i was like auditioning i would only get i would get sent these auditions that matched my look and my type so i would only get cholo auditions a uh, oh. cholo is like a mexican gangster and you can tell how tough I am by the way I pronounce <laughs> cholo, all right? I'm not a scary guy. I'm not a tough guy. I don't look like a tough cholo, all right? Like, I look like a cholo who loves, like, hummus and early Blink-182. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm not going to steal your wallet, but I might steal your heart. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? I <laughs> oh, man. Um, like I said earlier, I uh, I'm a wonderful, amazing partner. But it's weird because I remember being single, man. Being single sucked. I remember my ex, she would want to have sex like three or four times a day. And if I was lucky, <laughs> one of those times would be with me. So oh. what a hoe. What an absolute <laughs> hoe. Wow. Pretty bad. And then I tried doing online dating. I don't like Tinder. I don't want to tell my kids I met their mom while I was drunk on the toilet swiping right. All right? Like, that's not a fairy tale. <laughs> But uh, it's okay. We've been dating for a little while. We're doing quarantine together. We've been drinking a lot. Who's drinking during quarantine? Let's do a quick little cheers. A little cheers Ooh. to you guys. Boom. A little drink for all Ooh. of us. If you're drinking, drink. If, if you're doing drugs, I just want to say be careful. I, uh, I tried acid for the first time recently. I was tripping so hard. I didn't realize my little brother walked in the room and took some which is horrible it's absolutely horrible because that is the one experience you do not want to have as an only child all right very difficult oh. very, very difficult <laughs> um, i do have a horrible last name it's escobar people hear escobar and they're always like oh are you related to pablo are you in a cartel and uh, it doesn't really bother me because <laughs> they'll be dealt with <laughs> they will <laughs> and um i want to wrap on this i'm kind of disappointed we have all these things going on but i actually had a free flight to mexico tomorrow um oh, obviously no. i don't know if that's gonna happen but i had a free flight to mexico tomorrow i was getting deported but we'll see <laughs> if that still goes i don't know hey that's my time thank you so much my name is eric escobar thank you comedy when round of applause to yourselves you guys are beautiful <laughs> So this next comment coming up, <laughs> love her. She's a, um, one of the founding members of No Lie Comedy. You gonna love her too. Put your hands together for Sierra Fitzgerald. Hey guys. Um... You know what? I'm dealing with a hard time right now. I'm coming to terms with the fact that I am getting older. Uh, never easy, especially not for a woman to get older. I knew that I was getting older when people stopped offering me drugs in bathrooms. <laughs> it was a really, really, really hard thing to come by. Um, and I'll tell you the moment that for me was just like that, that kicker. Um, I was in a bathroom, these two girls come in, they're 20 something, all dolled up with their heels and their good knees and bullshit. And <laughs> they were super sweet and we're chatting and two of them decide to go into the stall together. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, there's only two reasons that women go into the stall together uh, and neither one of them had fingers long enough to search for a lost tampon. Uh, <laughs> now you know the secret. And one of them looked back at me and pointed and was just like, do you wanna, should we? And the other one said, and I quote, she doesn't look like the type. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm wearing a leather jacket. How do I not look like this height? You know? And I'm sitting there, like standing there in front of the mirror, and I'm ranting about how I did E in the 90s. How dare you? Oh <laughs> and then I thought about it. 
if I did E in the 90s, I should probably stop doing cocaine and bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm a law abiding citizen or whatever, um, <laughs> as close to it in this day and age as you can possibly be. I am black. So, you know, that's mm-hmm. a felony in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this quarantine has me feeling a little bit lonely. Um, I live in the house with one other person. That's my dog. Um, she's basically the drunkest <laughs> member of every bachelorette party. She's really <laughs> tiny and cute and blonde and always trying to make out with strangers. And I just know that I'm going to lose her one day. And I'm going to be like, get away from him. You don't know him. And she's going to be like, I love him. He has tacos. <laughs> I honestly don't know why I let her live in my house, but it's done now. Um, but it has me wanting to date and get out and get to know people. Um, but obviously your dating apps are, you know, up in the air and we're, you know, socially distancing and you don't want to be around too many people. And so I want to try something different. And I've been watching, you know, a lot of TV, a lot of movies, and I kind of think the right thing to do might be to try to get kidnapped. Um, (laughs) Like, it seems like the best way to make sure you're with the same person for 20 years. Oh, my God. (laughs) Like... (laughs) I feel like he'll like tie me up and be like, you can't get away. And after a week or so, I'm like, but how do you like your eggs? Like, <laughs> let's talk about this. Do you take like sugar and cream? Like, let's let's just have breakfast together. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> and, you know, Stockholm syndrome is real. And one day we'll have a couple of kids and they'll be like, mom, how do you and dad meet? I'm like, well, it started when I was wearing a mask and I was in the lion at Kroger and he followed me to the parking lot and threw me in the trunk of his car. And you know what? <laughs> to this day, I wonder what happened to my groceries. Um, you know, you find love how you find it. <laughs> uh, definitely over going clubbing and going out partying and all of that. Um, I'm humble enough to admit when things don't go my way. I had the unfortunate experience of um, going to a small town and Mm -hmm. ending up at a festival. And it was great. And small town people, like, you make friends when you don't expect to. Uh, They had shrimp nachos, which were possibly the best thing I'd ever had uh, at a festival. And ended up at a house party at some stranger's house. It was it was great. Go, you know, 2019 BC. And, <laughs> and everything in my night is going perfectly. I'm feeling amazing. And I'm in this club. And the DJ, who was terrible, best way to describe him is very owner's nephew-ish, you know? You know, the kind of DJs I'm talking about. And I've never been a spiteful person, but I really was in the club on Amazon looking up DJ equipment so I could go back and take his job. <laughs> and finally, he does something perfect. And I hear those magical chords of dun, 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 dun. Yes. And as every good Southern girl knows, when the When the chords to back that ass up comes on, Mm -hmm. you got to report to the dance floor. And my knees are terrible, but I definitely have one on the dance floor and a leg propped up on a bar stool. You don't know me, and I'll never see these small town jerks again in my life. (laughs) And as I'm right there, twerking like my life depends on it, and some man's whispering in my ear that I'm sexy, and I'm telling him, this ain't about you. I'm doing this for the 9-9 and the 2000. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I get a rumbly in my tumbly. Oh. <laughs> because shrimp nachos at a festival are a terrible idea. <laughs> and I've never considered myself a religious person. 
<laughs> I, I really haven't. But if you're going to pray, perfect place to do it is a small town in Louisiana. <laughs> and I prayed to every God in the history of ever to please let me make it. And as like the dance floor parted like the Red Sea and I hop up and I'm able to sprint, sprint to the bathroom with no line and no waiting, except that I had to wade through a puddle because there's standing water everywhere. Uh, This might be the perfect time to let everyone know I was wearing a romper. Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I made the awful decision to wear a romper to the club. Uh, it was cute until it wasn't. And <laughs> and you know what? As I'm sitting there, butt naked with my clothes on the purse hook. I realize that we're all the same and I'm no better than anyone else. (laughs) Guys, thank you so much for coming out, um, for tuning in, checking in. Please open your hearts and your wallets. Uh, We're doing this to raise money for this amazing fund, the 400-1 uh, fun. And of course, please remember and remind your friends, your colleagues, your racist relatives, everyone in your life that Black Lives Matter. And if they respond with all lives matter, that's your cue to cut them out of your life. Yep. Um, stay safe, everyone. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to the Church of Comedy Wham. <laughs> the quotine edition. And I'm going to need you to do what Sister Sierra said to open up your whole heart with a QH. I'm going to open up your whole heart with your wallet and give. Give effortlessly to the 400 plus one. Uh, all right, give <laughs> effortlessly. There's never been this many black people on this show <laughs> until I got this mic. Oh. I got a black uh-huh. mic in my hand, yeah. a white background. Why? Because black lives matter. Look, okay, yeah. look. um, Sierra Fitzgerald, <laughs> fucking hilarious, and mm-hmm. we're gonna keep that black train moving. Um, this has been beautiful. I am just elated. I am so glad that, that the Lord or whoever's up above just said, you know what? I'm not going to kill you on Tuesday. Cause I was definitely, oh. I was almost gone. Mm-hmm. Like they, they mm-hmm. would, they looked in and was like, damn, it's bad for him. Well, he has insurance. They'd be like, All right, cool. We'll just leave him hooked up. So <laughs> I swear this happened. They was oh. like, what, what's he, what's his juice on? Is it good? Is his juice cool? They, I was like, can I get some more IV? He was like, yeah, get him another IV. He got good insurance. Get him another IV juice. Get him a juicer. Um, I love that romper store. I've never, I've, I've never seen three girls in a, in a, in a, in a stall until I saw them either do cocaine or help someone out of a romper. It's the best thing. <laughs> it's one of the, <laughs> you know that America's gonna be okay when you see girls like. Bitch, I see you got a romper. Come on, let's go. I miss the best thing ever. <laughs> All right, it's amazing. All right, just like this next comic, I love him because he has so much swag that he dresses just like Joe Exotic. Not like yeah. he, not like he's on the show. <laughs> like he is Joe Exotic. I see him pull up with the hat. Y'all gonna know exactly what I am talking about, and y'all gonna love this motherfucker as much as I love him. So I'm gonna need y'all to make some noise, mm. like Dr. King coming back. And give it up for my man, Gabe Davis. All right. Hey, y'all.
know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me in uh, isolation comedy. Uh, yeah, full. Just got some, had some crawfish earlier today. Uh, I guess we kind of like halfway in quarantine at this point. Uh, <laughs> I guess the way I'm, the reason I'm saying that is because it's getting harder to text and drive than it was back in May. So. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's really hard not to hit somebody. Make it made to drive around. Uh, I actually, when the restrictions were lifted, I went back home to Georgia. This is where I'm from. Uh, stepped off the plane uh, with my family, went to Applebee's, and I'm still not proud of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because you know, Applebee's has some nerve. First off, they serve TGI Fridays frozen food. And they have a dish <laughs> there called an Oriental Chicken Salad, which I feel like is a horrible name mm. to give a dish that you're going to serve the public. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but my cousin got that dish, and I asked her, what makes it Oriental? And she was like, I don't know, the cashews do. <laughs> and I was like, those look like almonds. <laughs> It's like, I don't know, they all look alike. During this quarantine, it's been a whole lot of uh, sex with the missus happening. Well, with the ex now happening. Uh, we right. recently had to use Plan B. And my thing is, every time I got to use Plan B, it's never during the day when I got options and can price check. It's always late at night. <laughs> it's always late at night when my options are either Walgreens or CVS. And personally, I prefer CVS because where I live at, the way they got these stores set up is like they're roasting you because they got all this stuff on the same aisle. They got Plan B, the at-home HIV test, and pregnancy test. I call it the oops aisle. And it's... <laughs> And it's funny because it's five hours away from condoms. It's like they're saying, you way past rubbers at this point. Um, <laughs> who, who is picking up the at-home HIV test and taking that up to the cashier for her? <laughs> you can just buy that off of Amazon. And, and look at positive reviews. Uh... <laughs> What else? Yeah, so going back to Georgia and coming back here, I'm realizing how different the culture is here than it is in Georgia, particularly when it comes to going on vacation. I don't know if it's specific to uh, my ex, but going on vacation is different, especially when you're looking for a place to stay. Uh, here, Airbnb, I guess I assume everybody does this, but Airbnbs were like the things. Um, I prefer a hotel. And it seems like the less the Airbnb has, the better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went on a trip to uh, Fredericksburg and stayed in an Airbus in somebody's backyard. And I was, <laughs> my only question was, they got breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> The answer is no. Before we picked the Airbus, I was sent an Airbnb profile and the description for this place was, don't be surprised if you see a scorpion. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I'm going to always be surprised when I see a scorpion. <laughs> it's never a, a, a welcoming thing, but I'm glad to be back in uh, Texas. So I was reading the news and like, you know, I might as well talk about this, the riots and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I think riots should stay happening, man. Be a mainstay in this society. They're becoming the festivals that we couldn't go to this summer. Uh. <laughs> Whatever. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it should be a mainstay. You should, you know, I, I like that. You should be able to plan your day. <laughs> you should be able to plan your day around the riot. You should be able to be like, you know, I'm going to hit up the riot after work, text your friend. <laughs> Is which riot you hitting up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming like, you know, it's becoming like a social thing now. I mean, because you know dudes are out there shooting a shot at the right. <laughs> 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 I mean, can you imagine how many times women have been asked, what you doing after this? <laughs> I really do think the riots are the best place to take a girl out on a date because everything is free. You know, like. 
Uh, like, just go ahead and get it. This whole block is our oyster. <laughs> yeah. I hope like riot mentality stays residual when we get like a little bit after everything is over, you know? Like for instance, if you uh going out to get something to eat and the waiter brings the check over and he's like, uh, it'll be like a hundred and five dollars, and you just be like, no, we still rioting, man. Uh, <laughs> 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 you just smash the glass and get out of there. <laughs> 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 But while I'm on dating, man, uh, <laughs> I'm still like, you know, I'm kind of haphazardly doing the, uh, the the single thing. And you're talking to dudes. I realize we have a lot of dumb theories on women that are based on nothing. Like one quick experience and make a blanket rule for everybody else based on that. Myself included. Like, for example, I was at a dentist's office and the dental hygienist was cleaning my teeth. And her hand kept hitting my tongue, and I was like, she must want this dick. <laughs> <laughs> Why else would she keep touching my tongue this way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay on this dating train. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember uh, when, I, when I was uh, with my ex, we would talk about all kinds of things. We talked about holidays. She told me one of her favorite holidays was Valentine's Day. And I said, I hate Valentine's Day. And she asked me why. And I said, because there's no guy equivalent. And she said, yeah, there is. You have steak and blowjob day. <laughs> and I'm like, that is not the same. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's not once during elementary school did each kid come to school with a stack of steaks. Back to race, really quick. Uh, I think watching <laughs> white people get arrested is the black man's pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Because we both have the same reactions. Like, hmm, this is refreshing. <laughs> and I wish it was around all year. <laughs> <laughs> it's the summer. I realize like every pumpkin spice season, uh, I go to Walmart and I see pumpkin spice Cheerios. And we don't need that. Uh, just a quick PSA. Uh, white people, stop taking all our foods. Now, I don't know if Cheerios is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Cheerios is a black food, but I grew up in a black household. We had Cheerios, so as far as I'm concerned, it's a black food. And you can <laughs> so like at this point, as far as black people, all we got left is beef patties and cocoa bread. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's any uh, white strangers in the chat that know what cocoa bread is, but if you do, shut your mouth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh in uh 14 days it'll be june 19th which is juneteenth so i want to wish everybody happy another black history month yeah. uh yeah man i say that because i feel like i need to be more ethnic man because i don't get offended by the n-word like i feel like i'm supposed to and i feel bad about that you know like for instance if i was at some irish bar and there was no quarantine uh, the uh, bartender was like, sup, nigga, you know, I'd have to look around me for other black people to see if I'm supposed to be offended. But if nobody, <laughs> but if nobody's paying attention, I'd just be like, not much, man. Uh, I get a cider, hard, hard R. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've been a little uh, punchy, so I'm gonna keep going with this. <laughs> uh, I realized that here in America, we have a lot of pointless holidays. You know, we have like a National Dog Day and a National Donut Day. And I just found out that May 25th is National Missing Children's Day. Oh. Hmm. I feel like it's a pointless holiday because those kids are already out of school. <laughs> 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 uh, so uh, switch gears. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, regular squirrels are jealous of flying squirrels. 
Uh, because I think the flying squirrel got picked on at first because he has that extra flap of skin attaching his hand to his foot. But then, you know, one day that nigga floated. And <laughs> everybody was like, oh, shit, you know? Because I look at it like I'm a regular dude, and I'd be jealous of a flying dude. And I think that's what's happening in the squirrel community. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a regular squirrel just sees a flying squirrel, just look up at his mama like, really? You couldn't fuck a flying nigga to make me? Like, you had to fuck right <laughs> Daddy over here and shit. <laughs> that sounds like it was a bad joke, but I don't think <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys, for listening. Thanks for having Isolation Comedy. Donate to a charity of your choice and have a good night. Soon we're gonna have to make a, a, a GoFundMe for for Gabe. He's grabbing everything at these at these goddamn oh uh, at, at these at these protests. That, that boy is funny. And you and you saw how Fly told you Joe Exotic hashtag. That's him. Love him. He's hilarious. 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 Um, we're gonna keep the train moving. Uh, but first of all, I just want to thank everybody out there because um, this is like one of the highest um, donate, donation um, shows that we've had. Um, so please keep on donating. Again, treat this like reverse church. We see you with the collection basket. Don't just tap it, talk about bless it and move it. No, don't do that. Put money in there that fold. So that means when you see the, um, the, the uh, cash app, all of that is going to the 400 plus one donation, okay? And anytime you see someone's Venmo, that's going straight to the 400 plus one bail fund donation. This next comment coming up, I love her. I got to see her. She's real funny. Um, seen her on, on the Chupa. You have seen her on, on um, the Roast Battle Comedy Central. Love that show. And the 12 Questions podcast. I'm going to need you all to get ready for Anna Venezuela. <laughs> When you when quarantine gets so bad you have to start vaping again uh you become your own smoke machine which is very fun uh guys hello uh no tiny hands tonight i'm in long beach oh. right now helping a friend mm -hmm. i am whoo it is it is crazy it's an honor to be on this benetton ass show i'm loving it <laughs> um, <laughs> We, of course, LA has been uh, has been tearing itself apart this week, um, as it should. Defund those police. Um, I saw a Black Hawk helicopter fly over my house last month, and I was like, "That's mm -hmm. not good." Um, <laughs> and it's so funny because they're they're trying to figure out creative ways to like you know they lifted the curfew. They're trying to disperse the protests, and what they really needed to do was send in the street sweepers, not the cops. Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> You are not an Angelino unless you run barefoot and braless down the street to free your car at four in the morning. That is, <laughs> that's how we do it here. Man, I hope you guys are talking to your colonizers. Um, my dad married a white lady because he was trying to ruin a, a bloodline, and he did. <laughs> it's great. And uh, I was talking to my white grandma the other day. She Here's what you need to know about her. Uh, she's been married and divorced no less than seven times. Oh, yeah. she's also a marriage and family therapist. That, <laughs> is, that is some shit. She's real fun. Uh, she she once uh, called to tell me I was a solid six out of ten. <laughs> oh, I was like, whoo, grandma, that's a good way to find out you don't want to fuck me. I am <laughs> I'm your grandkid. Like, you no, know, I got an ass. And then I do. Um, I am, so crazy um i was talking to her uh she she's a really progressive lady she marched in the civil rights movement she you know she she did her part she thought she fixed it and um 
uh, it was so fun because she told me, she goes, Anna, I'm just so happy. I'm watching these protests on, 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 you know, social media and on the news. And, you know, I have to tell you, they look lighter. I said, really? lighter? You mean less people, social distancing? And she went, no, you know. And I said, oh, you mean white. That's what you mean. They look lighter. <laughs> and she said, she said, yeah, that means things are going to change. And uh, guys, I never laughed so hard in my life. Uh, I promise you I'll euthanize her at the end of the week. I promise you uh, she is not part of the solution any longer. Um, man, it is, it's crazy. I have, um, I have a colonizer in my life. I have a white man in my life. If you want to know what his dick tastes like, it's health insurance. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yes, cool privilege, right. expensive mm. cheese. You know what All I mean? Right. He's killing it. He's <laughs> killing it. He's from, he's from San Francisco, California. So he's born as woke as he could be, um, mm. which is great. The only thing he knows how to fix in our house is a pronoun. That's it. Um, <laughs> so, he's got oh, me gosh. working like I came from two Home Depots, you know, like he is... <laughs> <laughs> he is he is interesting and we had a, we had an interesting discussion because race and privilege has really really played a role in our relationship because the other half of me that's white is third generation trailer trash we are not woo, we are not doing well and so i you know uh it comes up a lot and he told me this story last christmas about a christmas he had a long time ago he had a um he has a his uncle was adopted he did um a couple of years in Burkina Faso, that's in West Africa. And he was adopted into this West African family. And they've since then fought, like had their, their children come over and do like study abroad stuff, start college over here. And so there's this like African part of his family. And he always used to just tell me like, he, like he's the kind of white guy who cracks the chicken bones, which is crazy. I was like, who taught you that technology? <laughs> who taught you that? I thought, I was like, damn, uh, I didn't know you ate wings like I do. That's fucked up. Um, <laughs> and so like, he, he's interesting, man. He was telling me his, um, his family members got together. They like to do a trip every Christmas because they got money like that. And they decided one year to go to Savannah, Georgia. And they took their family who was from West Africa with them. And I just started laughing, man. And he goes, why? And I said, you mean you took a West African to Savannah, Georgia? And he goes, uh-huh. <laughs> and I said, uh, did you happen to tour any plantations? And he says, oh. as a matter of fact, I did. And I was like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> He goes, what? I go, babe, that's a fucking blind spot. You guys didn't see that that's a little insensitive? And he said, no. I said, well, well who is your tour guide agency? He goes, I don't know, but they were all, it was a white hood kind of agency. You know what I mean? I was like, oh shit. Anyway, um, just like, I'm just saying, talk to your colonizers and tell them when they have a blind spot. Tell them when they have a blind spot. They need to fucking know. It's crazy. I, um, I went to uh, with him to Southeast Asia, which was very eye opening. Uh, can't you know? Came back with a cough. Sorry, um, that was my fault. And um, it was crazy, man. He we were in Southeast Asia, and I got to watch him experience racism for the very first time, which was brilliant. Here's what happened: We were in the Philippines, and a man walked up to him. And, and when I say Asia, by the way, most white people, when they go to Asia, they go to Japan. Let's start our Asia. No, no, no. We went to fucking Blade Runner is where we went. We went to <laughs> Manila. We went to, we went to Bangkok. We went to places where we were like, ah. And so we're in there. This man walks up to him, calls him a colonizer, which is, oh man, what a great burn. I've been using it ever since. Cause he's been <laughs> calling me for three years, you know? Um, <laughs> That's a great burn. And then the guy spit on it. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm. And I looked at him and I was like, babe, as a girlfriend, I am so sorry you had to experience that kind of prejudice and racism. But is a uh, Latino in these fucked up Trump ass times? <laughs> 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 guys i came that's what i did i came it was <laughs> now i have a weird fetish where i can only come if i'm watching people be mean to my boyfriend it's great um <laughs> really good really good 
I grew up in a small town in Northern California. Um, and in Northern California, what you need to know, I grew up in a town that had two prisons, one bar and premium quality racism, just artisanal, what happens when you leave white folks all by themselves, just, you know, ooh, straight from the source, you know, no books, uh, <laughs> nothing got through. And it was crazy, man. My dad, he didn't teach me Spanish because that would have made it a liability for my safety. Our neighbor had a Confederate flag in one of his windows. Mm -hmm. And so I moved to LA and I was very excited because I'm like, I'm going to be around everybody. This is going to be so great. I'm just got a hayseed coming out of my mouth, still saying <laughs> y'all overalls, you know, I moved to LA and I, uh, I, I get off the train and I'm like, hi, Latinos. Hello. Hi, other Latinos. Hello. Hi. Uh, I, I'm here to be amongst you. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> and they're like, bitch, you speak Spanish? And I was like, no, I sure don't. There's a long history of, of racism towards Latinos in California. I sure don't. And they said, bitch, you're white. And that's that's how I found that out. That was, they didn't even say, well, no, they wanted me to understand, which felt hurtful. That's hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, which I think what we found out in this situation, and by the way, if you're Latino and you don't think that this shit does not, affect you and that you don't have an obligation to stand with Black Lives Matter right now, you need to take your privileged ass and get a little education because we are all under the same boot. We really are. And like, it's so fucking wild. My dad always used to tell me this. He always used to say, Mija, never turn your back on the LAPD. And I go, why? And he goes, because you want to see it when they shoot you. Mm -hmm. And I didn't grow up anywhere near LA. <laughs> I didn't need to hear that. <laughs> I was just like, oh I've just been, I've been walking around my whole life looking for crowds of white people being like, ah, <laughs> like, oh no, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And I, I keep seeing all these tweets, all these comedians keep getting on the, on, on Twitter and being like, can you just imagine what they would do without cameras? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm like, didn't your parents teach you to fear the police? Okay. I guess you're white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> cool. Cool. That's cool. It's wild. I am. Uh, I, 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 I really, it's uh, oh God, I want to end on something and I'm, oh yeah. Which here's what, here's what's really going on. There are two classes of people in this country. There are people who have had to fly spirit airlines and people who haven't, who would never it's rich and poor. That is, mm. that's, I mean, Ugh. People of color <laughs> predominantly fall into anyway. I'm yelling. Um, there's this is not funny. Um, <laughs> which rich people are you gonna eat first? That's my question. Mm. Which rich people are you gonna eat first when this COVID shit's over? I'm gonna mm. tell you who I'm gonna start with first. I'm gonna start with uh people who took their stimulus checks and they bought purebred dogs. That's who I'm gonna <laughs> start. The audacity in this economy, you're gonna <laughs> buy a pug? That dog's gonna <laughs> breed. It's going to take a ventilator away from your grandma. What are you doing? <laughs> Crazy. Then I'm going to move on to my absolute. This is my goal. This is my main course, guys. I want to eat the owner of Amazon. Oh, I want I bet he tastes like, prosciutto. you know, like I, I bet. Ooh, I want him Amazon fresh to my house in sections. That's what I want. I want him already butchered. I want to turn him into Oroz con Bezos. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I, want, I swear to God, I want to turn him into brown people food to teach him a fucking point. That's what I want. You know what I mean? He doesn't even deserve to be an appetizer. No quiche for you, sir. No quiche for you. Oh my God. I am not hearing the light sound. So that's it. I I was on a roll, man. I was on a roll. Listen, I, I please donate to the show. And you know what? This has been, I've been on the show for like three weeks now. And mm -hmm. your host mentioned, Tremaine mentioned that this is the blackest the show has ever been. And I do have to say, it's been a really good show. God damn you know, right. You know, if you're in comedy, bring, bring people of color into your spaces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No one wants to hear the same goddamn perspective. That's just, <laughs> that's just the truth. You know what I mean? I hear one more little white girl with a hump in her back 
and you know, a messy <laughs> fun telling me about how hard it is to date. I'm gonna lose my. <laughs> 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 oh, that's like, no, yes. no, no, mama. So please donate to this show because the money tonight is going to a good cause. Also, if you're out of Texas, there is an organization called Races Texas, and they are helping families reunite at the border because this government is using COVID-19 to separate families even more aggressively. So know. just fucking be informed, be about it. And you know what? Come los ricos. Okay, guys. Bye. Woo -woo. And welcome, welcome back <laughs> to Comedy Wham! Church at Home. You just heard, Sister Anna. This has been the blackest show you've ever seen. <laughs> no, your computer screen isn't off. It's just black. <laughs> so I'm going to need you to open up your whole heart, all right? <laughs> and open up your wallet <laughs> and give effortlessly to the PayPal. All right, look up Comedy Wham. We're giving to 400 plus one, okay? And anytime you give to someone's Venmo, that again is going to 400 plus one. I love Anna Venezuela. Give it a one more time for her. I love her. All right. Woo! Woo! This next comic, she's going to hate that I'm going to do this. But one of the very first shows I ever did, I had her headline it. And when I say this, this woman destroyed, like, like, I mean, stage to stage, got off stage and was like, I'm about a year in. People don't fuck with me like that out here, but soon they will. And God damn it, they do now because she got about a billion followers. You already done seen her. She invented mm -hmm. black Twitter. All right. Mm -hmm. This woman is all over. She is the only woman. She know me as Spike. She talked to me oh. once and was like, hey, yo, Spike. Boy, you thick. It was the funniest shit I've ever heard, all right? This woman is great. She owns everything. She produces. She writes. She directs. She acts. And she'll even do your goddamn logo for you, all while she giving you 40 whole last minutes of her slaying stage to stage. This young lady produces and directs her own web series called The Roxy Hayes Show. It's on right now. You can watch it. She has a nerdcore rap mixtape I have yeah. never heard of no shit like that before until she walked up to me like, hey, yo, Spike, you know, I got a mixtape. What you going to put on it? Yeah. I was like, all right, I got 25. It's called yeah. Roxy versus Roxy Hayes mixtape, and it's stylized in one of my favorite movies, um, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yes, mm. you need to check it out. We got some whole other shit. You are already clapping. I don't give a fuck because y'all at home. I'm reading this like it's <laughs> Y'all clapping, y'all clapping. Give it up to the motherfucking home, girl, Roxy Hayes. introduction and I'm probably going to eat shit. So thank you. That introduction is probably going to be the best thing y'all fucking hear tonight. So um, first I'm going to just start this off apologizing. I'm not prepared at all. I have not <laughs> done stand up in a while, like even like online. Um, I was writing jokes while y'all were talking. And this is what the fuck I got. So <laughs> I was like, yo, what's funny right now? What's funny? And then, and then Anna went. And I was like, "Oh yeah, that, that, that's fire." I don't have any of those those uh those things I can say, so I don't know. <laughs> We're on a ride today together. Um, it sucks because like I really want to talk about what's going on. I really want to just talk about like the injustices and just the mm -hmm. fucked up shit that's going on. But um, as a black woman, I'm fucking tired of talking about it because I'm like living it. I'm sick. I'm gonna be real. This isn't a joke. White people, I'm sick of y'all, quite frankly. Just as a whole, as a whole, I'm sick of y'all just doing shit. Just stop. <laughs> like if, if if what you're doing isn't helpful, just stop it. Just stop it. This isn't even a joke. Stop messaging me to tell you how you can help. That's the weirdest fucking yeah that's the weirdest shit mm, is yeah. i like in the past week i've gotten like mm. 20 messages from white people like hey how can 
how can I be a good ally? How can I be a good ally to you? And I really want to be like, the best way you can be an ally is like, shut the fuck up. Like, if you, <laughs> that's the best possible thing you can do is shut the fuck up. Like, don't talk to me. Um, maybe give me some money. That'll be helpful. If you if oh, Black Lives yeah. Matter, my bill is <laughs> days. That is how you can show your support to a black person. That's 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 the best way. Um, and I was, you know what? I I I I, I was fine. Like I was I, I was okay with, with dealing with stuff. Um, I stay in the house anyway. But I had this weird ass experience at half price books that I have to tell y'all about. That was just so fucking <laughs> weird. Like I still don't understand what happened. Um, so I'm a half price books. My motherfucking business, like I do a half price books. Half price books, if you can't see this background, like I fucks with books. <laughs> I fucks with books. Books is my shit. Books make me happy. Books mm. make my pussy wet, and my pussy has not been wet in months. So I literature mm. does the vagina good. And so I am in half price books, which just completely moistens my pussy. Um, because they're so cheap. Like it's 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 a bookstore made for me. A bitch with twenty dollars. Okay, <laughs> so I went in there with ten dollars. I'm like, yo, I'm about to ball the fuck out. This this ten dollars is it spreads, it's spreading around this half price books. So there's a there's really weird section of half price books where it's like three subjects that don't go together at all, <laughs> but I fucks with all of them very hard. So it's like the classic literature section so it's like you know shakespeare jane austen that's my bitch and that's my homie mm -hmm. and then the next section is like the foreign language books but also like the manga books so they're all right there and then the next section yes right yes yeah. <laughs> and then the next section is the pregnancy books and I like going to that section because I'm like, oh, I'm never doing that shit again. So that's like the cautionary tale. <laughs> that's my, that's like the stomach section. So like that's, but that's like my favorite section of the store. <laughs> so I am walking around. So now, you know, it's, it's COVID still going on in the midst of all this like fuckery. And so the, the Half Price Books has a rule posted where like there can only be one person per aisle on the, in the, in the bookstore. So like there's this bitch on the floor reading books which is not your business picking her feet which is disgusting because the books are already like used books oh so there was probably already somebody that was picking their feet prior to it being in half price and so it's a chick sitting on the floor picking her fucking feet reading shakespeare and so I'm already mad because like she's reading the shit that i was going to touch so i'm like oh she's already footed all of these books here so i can't <laughs> I cannot engage. Oh, somebody got something beeping in the back. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, wait, my brownie's ready. Hold on, wait, give me two seconds. Hold on one second. I'm so sorry. Give me two seconds. I'm so sorry. Oh. I love Roxy. I love Roxy. Oh, man, this is so good. I love Roxy. Oh, this, so ignorant. this is so goddamn ignorant. This is so ignorant. This is Roxy oh, Hayes. And she's sitting on a goddamn pillow. She's so, she's oh so hood. Oh, my God, I want a brownie. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. Show y'all so you didn't think I was lying. Huh? You better mail me one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is, this is what happens when so you bring ignorant. this is what happens when you bring me on shit. Right, yeah. so, <laughs> yep. so, this, so what I was talking about, so this bitch <laughs> touching footed shit. And so, like, because it's only one person per, per aisle, I adhere to the half price rules. So I keep walking past her. And I'm in there for like a good hour and a half. Because like I said, I'm high and it's my spot. So I found him like, fuck it. She just wants to be in there playing with her feet, playing with herself in that section. Uh, I'm just not going to go on that aisle anymore. So I go on the aisle next to her. She comes up. I'm going to say like two minutes later, she comes up to me and she goes, are you following me? <gasps> and, I was, and like my, my immediate, I have like, you know how people have like fight or flight? I have like fight or laugh in your face. So you're either going to get one of those. <laughs> like I'm either going to laugh at your fucking face or I'm going to beat your ass. And so once again, I'm in my happy spot. I got $10. Which, if you convert that to half price, I had a million dollars in half price. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I was good. I was good. So she was like, are you following me? I was like, yo, you know, I don't know what you're talking about, but like, just, just get away from me. And she comes back. She's like, well, it, it seems like you keep following me in here. I just want to know if you're following me. And I was like, bitch, why, if I was following you, why did you have to follow me to ask me 
if I was following you. <laughs> that's, that's not how following works. If I'm, I'm not the brightest book on the show. Are books bright? They're not. So I'm not the smartest motherfucker. But if that's not, how <laughs> then she, we end up getting into it. I'm not gonna go all the way into it. This is just becoming a very long, angry story. She walks away. She ends up walking away. Wait, hold on. Spike text me. What you want? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm high. <laughs> I, I got you. I'll do the joke. Okay, so uh, <laughs> mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> My bad. So I end up getting in line behind her, and then she told the manager I followed her into the line to pay for my own books at half price books. And it just really <laughs> makes me <laughs> White people don't understand how like robberies work. Like, I don't know if it's a thing where like you get to be safe all the time. So you don't, you perceive danger differently because I'm like, if I'm a rob a bitch, like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm plotting on robbing a bitch. I'm not going to wear an anime shirt. Cause that's what I had. Like I had this. Like I'm easily identifiable. <laughs> and then if I'm going to rob a bitch, I'm not going to rob a bitch in half price books because we are both broke. Mm. <laughs> it's the three. Mm-hmm. If I'm a rob a bitch, I'm going to Barnes and Noble. Like those pockets are deep. You're buying new books with plastic. That's where I'm gonna fucking go. I'm not gonna rob you. We both have fifty two cents. I don't want your 52 cents. I don't, I don't understand. So just don't let your fear. Come on. Who, who am I going to rob? Well, I could, but I won't. This is <laughs> so that was, I was just upset about whatever. So Spike requested that uh, I do this joke that he enjoys. Um, how much time do I have? Y'all ain't saying shit. Keep, keep going. Oh, fuck it. Okay. So yeah, Black Lives Matter. Keep doing. Whose deep ass yeah. voice was that? Get that Spike. Go keep going. Yo, okay. okay. I, I got turned on. I haven't got penis in a while. So you better stop coming up on here. He's trying to, trying to fuck. Cause to fuck via internet. Playing with me. Don't spike me on that nigga shit. So no, no draws on. Okay, anyway, I'm at the house. So... <laughs> <laughs> if you wear drawers in the house, you can hate yourself. Why would, you, why would you do that to your genitals? Why would you do that to your genitals? That's all so, I I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, so Spike asked me to do this joke. It's so stupid. So I like to watch porn. Um, but because I'm a nerd, whatever. I, it's a specific genre of porn that they, they make, they make porn for everybody. But there's a specific genre of porn that is made for nerds. So it's usually like, it is parodies of different movies and mm-hmm. animes and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. That's what I like. But I watched that freak, but <laughs> I was reading the mm-hmm. comments. The only reason I don't like it sometimes is because it, as a nerd, like my, my nerddom is, is higher than my horny. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always more of a nerd than I am horny. So it's like, this shit is, like, non-canonical. You know what I mean? Like, it does not fit. (laughs) It's right. It does not fit within the realm of this universe. This is some bullshit. It's not real. Like, I was watching, I was watching um, an Avengers porn, and they had Scarlet Witch fucking Tony Stark. And I was like, I don't, she's fucking with Vision. Why would she? <laughs> that's not they're they're not even compatible. She doesn't like him as a person. He's no, that it just doesn't make sense. So I it, it's hard for me. So I'm like, they need to make they need to get people like me and Marcus over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think he sent me the link. He sent me the link. I think <laughs> they need to get us to write the mm-hmm. shit. So not only is it on some horny <laughs> shit, it is proper and it is canonical with the actual source material so i like a lot of like older shows so like i like would you like me to do yours first or last because i got to add some more okay fuck that (laughs) so i would like to see (laughs) oh gross Uh, i want to see a scooby-doo porn (laughs) i want to enjoy a scooby-doo porn but it would be a gay scooby-doo porn 
because Scooby and Shaggy been fucking since the 60s. Mm-hmm. They've been mm-hmm. fucking for decades. They're always eating Scooby snacks together in the van. <laughs> Scooby snacks is cold for penis, okay? That's what that means. And they would be fucking. And it would go like this, and I... You can't look at me that hard. <laughs> <laughs> the voice is so... <clears throat> <laughs> Reggie, it looks so stupid. I never have to look at myself doing this joke. Oh no, Reggie! <laughs> Wrong hole, Reggie, and that's hilarious. <laughs> you see Wrong hole, Reggie. <laughs>
See, that's that quotein life. <laughs> oh, quo, capital T. <laughs> I told y'all, Roxy, ignorant. Yes, you funny. She hit y'all with 10 different voices and y'all don't even notice. This girl, <laughs> on the back of her wall, she had um, she had all the masks. She had a Black Ranger mask, a Black Panther mask, and a gas mm -hmm. mask. That's the craziest mm -hmm. shit I've ever seen. She, <laughs> she was a nerd who was ready for the revolution and a goddamn frat party. You not, you not prepared like Rocky Hayes. You ain't prepared like Rocky Hayes, goddamn it. Yeah, she kept calling me Spike. That's a whole different story, I'm man. Sorry. Like, no, 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 man. It's no. nickname. It's all good, man. But no, seriously. <laughs> This is the blackest y'all done, done seen on this show. And mm. I know for a fact, I look like every single person's uh, on person on here, Shadow. So you got a whole <laughs> lot of black tonight. So that means you need, to, you need to open up with your whole heart and <laughs> give, <laughs> give effortlessly That's what you to, the, to the PayPal. Because that goes right mm. to where? The 400 plus one, okay? We ain't, it's not even Sunday, but we going to church anyway. Mm -hmm. testify all right no but seriously um mm -hmm. thank all i mean all the comics you all you all are amazing um you all make me happy that i wasn't knocking on heaven's door i'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now like i can do that you got to do the voice like a coke voice never mind mm -hmm. but um look <laughs> if you watch please tell your friends um to join us next time we do this all the time in fact grab this link because just because it's not live somewhere it lives on the internet ask your president um so keep <laughs> i'm sorry because <laughs> so i'm sorry i'm sorry but you know you know i got you uh um so keep your eye on comedy whams um social media page we're on instagram um twitter facebook for all the updates visit comedywham.com okay for all news about um not only just Austin comedy, because until comedy is back open, we doing comedy all over the world. We brought someone from the Great Britain all the way here. We have people from LA talking jokes for right here. We have Roxy, who never, I've been on 25 shows with Roxy and I've only seen her at two of them. So that means you have seen her tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a special thing. I, Roxy, the only person I know to, to miss a club gig and get booked again. That's how goddamn funny she is. Y'all got her tonight for free. And she, that's why she ain't saying shit because she know it's true. All right, mm. look. Um, I also want to thank it is um drone <laughs> rivers. <laughs> you still going taking them to the cleaners? All right, so I want to thank Drone Rivers, aka Derek, who called the cops uh, for his, <laughs> his demo. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's actually getting married, so if that money yeah. is 400 plus one, it's going to his plus one because we love Holly out there too. Um, oh, looking mm. at she has a great fucking show, by the way. Um I want to thank Richard. He's in the back. He's our voice from God. Y'all haven't heard him, but we heard him. Why? Because we taking y'all to church. Y'all ain't been to church, <laughs> but you here now because you got all this black here. So thank you, Richard. Also <laughs> thank um, Valerie, Laura. They all in the background. Um, please, again, donate. Donate with your heart, all right? Your whole <laughs> heart, all right? Watch the recordings. It's going to be posted on Twitch, YouTube, and somebody going to be bootlegging this by tomorrow. Um, <laughs> please come back to our next show. We do this every Tuesday, Friday. I've been Tremaine Bradley. Y'all use condoms. Good night. Yay!